everybody and welcome to Tri-State's virtual open house. My name is Megan. I hope you can hear me okay behind my mask. Um, so I'm going to be leading you on a clinic, a tour of our wild bird clinic. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, I have a degree from the University of Delaware. Go Blue Huns! Um, I've been here for about six years. Um, I started as an intern in 2014 and then um, they just couldn't get rid of me and I've been here ever since. Um, I am the senior clinic supervisor. Um, so I have uh, duties ranging from uh, admitting birds that are brought to our clinic to maintaining um, the clinic, um, providing daily treatments for uh, birds in our care. Um, and I do a lot with baby birds, uh, moving them from incubators all the way to release. Uh, so that's a little bit about me. Um, I'm gonna flip you guys around and we'll start our tour. So welcome to Tri-State Bird Rescue. Um, we were founded in 1976 by Lynn Frank um, in response to the uh, grounding of the tanker um, uh, Olympic Games in the Delaware River. Uh, it was the sixth worst oil spill on the East Coast. Um, so, uh, in response to that, Lynn Frank gathered biologists, um, vet wildlife veterinarians, and um, they really rehabilitated um, and washed all of these oiled wildlife. Um, we moved to this building um, off of Possum Hollow Road in 1989. Um, it's pretty cool. It was just a, uh, uh, a barn, and in 1992, renovations were completely done um, to the clinic that we have now, and we're very proud of it. Um, so we're going to enter the building. Um, because of COVID-19, um, we have some restrictions, so when you bring a bird to us now, um, we'll enter the uh, vestibule. We have some carriers set up, we have our admissions forms, um, we're trying to keep it a pretty quiet um, space so that uh, we minimize interaction to keep us safe and our presenters safe. Um, so you fill out the form, you put your bird in the carriers over here, um, and then you step out and we come and get the bird um, and admit it. So you can see the carriers. So we're gonna first um, head through our lobby. So if you were coming on um, just a regular op day of operations, this is about um, as far as you can go. We are a wildlife hospital. We treat um, wild and native birds 365 days a year. So we're gonna walk, um, but this is virtual open house. So I'm gonna take you behind the scenes. Um, so we do, I'll kind of explain what we're seeing. Um, we do a lot of habitat. It's one of my favorite things. So we research the natural history um, of the bird and we try to recreate their habitat while they're in our care. For one, um, it really helps them to stress, um, to feel less stress. Um, stress, they're going to feel stress um, whether or not, you know, because they're in our care, um, but we try to mitigate that stress really, um, uh, delays healing times and that's important, um, to mitigate. So now we're in our upstairs bird kitchen. You can see we have a ton of different diet, uh, offerings. So I just prepared like a little tray of things that we, uh, uh, serve every day to our patients. So this is a songbird platter. 
Um, it, it is kitten kibble that's soaked in water, um, grapes uh, cut up, egg yolks, and then a little topping. Um, I often say it's kind of like a pizza. Um, so most of our songbirds get offered this. Um, the kibble is really great for the protein. Um, so it's the egg yolk and the grapes um, for the fruit. Um, we, have a diff we have a couple different seed options. Um, this is a mix that we make for our cardinals. Um, cardinals have a unbelievable beak strength. Um, so we want to offer them a lot of tough seeds because um, they'll be able to eat it. Um, this is another seed mix that we offer. Um, we actually um, have this native grass seed. So when we get um, greenery donated, we'll collect it and the birds go crazy for it. Um, and then these are both um, diets that we offer to our ducklings um, and our waterfowl. So this will be for our ducklings um, that we have in house. And then this is for our waterfowl. These are duck pellets. So we can swing around the kitchen a little bit. We've got lots of recipes. Um, and then I wasn't going to share, but uh, we have, uh, obviously we treat carnivorous species here. Um, so we offer them dead whole prey, such as mice, quail. Um, I just didn't think that anybody would want to see that. <laughs> so moving from our kitchen, we're going to head into one of our bird rooms. This is called the duck room. So um, we actually have made these, what we call modulars. They're really cool. Um, we're able to kind of piece them together. Um, so this is um, set up for a vulture right now. Um, so you can see, again, we researched the natural history of the bird. Um, uh, you see we have a mirror because they're they live in flocks um, so we want to make sure that they have a buddy um, and then they're a little bit private so we just offer them um, a little uh, curtain um, for them to go behind um, we have this cage set up um, for a woodpecker we recently had a pileated woodpecker in our care um, so you can see we have some nice branches for her to climb on. Um, we've got some greenery and a suet feeder. And then in this one, um, we have these really cool pens. Um, so they are net, they're a net bottom. And these, so you can see, I don't think you can see my hand, um, species. Um, like loons that can't uh, stand. So their body weight is distributed a little bit differently than most birds. Um, so we want to make sure that their body weight is being distributed much like they would be if they were in the water. Our bird room. And thank you so much for joining me today. I'm glad to see so many people um, on kind of a gloomier day, I guess. Um, so now we're gonna um, head into our bird, our baby bird room. So baby birds are one of my favorite things on earth. Um, and we can say hi to Rachel. She's feeding our baby birds. Um, so here you can see we have incubators um, for our nestling species that can't go back into the nests. Um, we can see we have a nestling common grackle, my personal favorite babies. Every to the volunteers that I see in the comments, hi, I miss you. You can all roast me in the comments for loving grackles. So we'll come over here to see what Rachel's doing. So these are our house finch babies. And you can see that she's feeding them with, um, giving them some water with a paintbrush. And then um, she's giving them a specialized diet 
called uh, FNS. It's a, a, a agreed upon mix um, in the wildlife rehab community. Um, so you can see how much care she's taking while she's feeding them. And they are so darling. And I think she's gonna change their cup. So thank you, Rachel, very much. <laughs> we'll move on. So we're heading into a different baby bird room. Um, we have this amazing um, basket shelf that one of our amazing volunteers made. Um, you can see we have UVB lighting for them um, as they would usually be outside under the sun. Um, we have some more grackles in basket 16. Um, again, you can, they're quite loud. <laughs> um, so we'll move on. So right in front of us is a small lab that we have. Um, we can do um, fecal smears to look for internal parasites. So looking at um, their feces under a microscope. We can do some blood work um, to check their health status. So um, we're gonna move into um, the medical kind of wing, I would call it. Um, so this is our meds room. Um, you can see uh, all of our equipment. Every bird that comes into um, um, so we do, um, physical exams, um, we treat, we can prescribe medications, um, we have an incubator back here as well, um, for our baby birds while they're waiting for their admit, um, and then we'll move into this surgery room, um, we have the most amazing wildlife veterinarian on staff. Um, so she can perform um, different surgeries, uh, fixing broken bones, um, doing sutures, healing wounds. Um, and this is our radiograph machine. Um, we are so fortunate um, to uh, be able to have a digital x-ray machine. Um, it's like, it saved my life. You guys have no idea. Um, so we have, uh, can just snap the picture um, and it comes right up to the screen and we can do all kinds of diagnostics. Um, you can see we're looking at a radiograph of a great horned owl that we took. Um, and this is just to check for broken bones, um, anything that might be going on internally we can see. Um, so it's so amazing. So we'll swing around. So this is the plate, um, and then we wear lead um, gowns and lead vests um, just to make sure we're protecting ourselves from radiation. Um, and then we also have um, cameras on our large bird cages. So we are looking into one of our flight cages. Um, the cameras are really awesome. Um, let's see if we can spot, um, who is in this enclosure. We have, um, a second year bald eagle in our care, um, so we're able to monitor her, um, status, um, her plight, if she's eating, um, all of those things, and we don't have to bother her. It's really important, um, <laughs> because our patients are wild and native, that we don't have a lot of contact with them. Um, this is not um, like a sanctuary or um, like a zoo, this is a hospital. Um, all, of our all of our patients are uh, wild and thus very scared and stressed in our care. Um, and we work really hard to mitigate all of those stressors. Um, so our cameras give us the opportunity to see what they're doing um, without having to stress them out. Um, if you think about it, uh, our 
but wild birds have never experienced walls and suddenly they're sick and in pain um, and in our care. Uh, so it's really important that we mitigate stress and our cameras allow us to do that. So we're gonna, uh, I'll quick sh uh, show you guys. Um, this is a wall of stuff that taken off of birds, unfortunately. Um, so a lot of it is fishing line um, and fishing hooks. Um, unfortunately, it's a big, um, a common thing that we see, uh, we'll walk over here. Um, so we have a lot of the big lures um, that we've taken off of birds um so you know if you're at your local park or you're at your local pond and you see some fishing line just grab it and clean it up um doesn't get uh tangled in it um so this moving on this is our hydrotherapy room um it is like it looks like a spa um but here we can swim birds that are normally in water um so we have two large tubs um, while every, uh, so mallards, uh, other diving, um, while they're building up their waterproofing before they can move outside, um, they'll swim in here so we can keep an eye on them. Um, and if you notice, we have this fancy little mirror, um, above the pool. So I'll back up pretty slowly and show you. We can keep an eye on them, make sure they're not getting too cold um, or too wet while they're working on their waterproofing by looking. So we'll um, head downstairs. So I hope everyone is having a great day. Um, and hopefully you got to enjoy the sunshine. So this is what I was talking about when I was saying renovations were done in 1992. So if you can imagine, this was the only level of this building. It's pretty spectacular. Um, so if you looked straight up, uh, you would see the roof of the ceiling of the barn. And now we have three floors. Um, so this is our downstairs. Um, we have a map um, and hand feeding times of all the cages. So we'll move. Um, this is our down section. So again, kind of the same thing. I bet this doesn't look like any of our kitchens. We have some mealworms for our insectivore friends. Bins, lots of food bins. So this is our downstairs hallway. You can see um, the stalls, pretty cool. Um, if you join us uh, in a tomorrow, I believe, um, for uh, uh, Michelle's tour of the annex. Um, if you can believe, before the annex was built, um, we used this hallway to wash birds. Um, it was pretty, pretty awesome but the annex is just amazing so if you tune in then you'll get to see how far we've come from this hallway to the annex so these rooms down here are for um larger species that we have um like bald eagles osprey um geese things that aren't going to be able to comfortably fit um in a smaller enclosure. So this room is set up for an osprey right now. Um, they are a very specialized bird. They only eat, uh, only eat fish um, in our care. So we have lots of um, different perching options for them, as you can see. Um, they also enjoy a friend while they're in our care. So uh, you can see the mirrors. Um, the bath pans for the fish. So, um, we treat 
a hundred over 151 different species here at tri-state um everything from uh hummingbirds to bald eagles so it's pretty spectacular um i feel very honored to even say i get to come to so we're gonna head outside and see some of our outdoor caging So um, once the patients are um, on their road to recovery and uh, a little bit more, um, well, a little bit less critical, um, where they don't require medications uh, so frequently um, and they need to build up their flight muscles, um, they'll come to one of these outdoor enclosures so we can see we have a, a, a super beautiful campus. Um, so these cages right here in front of us, our baby birds will move out to. So the guys that, uh, the bigger guys like our robins and our grackles, our blue jay babies, they'll all move out to this cage um, when they uh, are fledged. Um, and are too rambunctious to keep inside. Um, it's important to get them outside to get them hearing the local dialects um, and you know get their levels, um, nice and toned so they'll move outside and then all of our baby birds um, passerine species uh, are released on site um, so they're like teenagers uh, they um, they don't really need our care, but they still need our support. So you can see um, we have some feeding platforms. Um, one to my right, one to my left. So we put out food for them all day um, and then bring it in at night uh, to give them kind of more of a softer introduction. Um, to life as an independent bird. Um, you can see the house uh, in the background. Um, that's the John C. Vincent house. Um, it was built in 1795. Um, so that was the owner of the property and the barn. So we'll walk on over. Um, you can see we have a lot of uh, wild birds that live uh, on campus. We have um, a pond here. That's, I just think is so beautiful and amazing. Um, here, so we won't go and see um, different pools um, for, like I said, loon species, grebes, and mallards. So we have four different enclosures with various pools, um, different depths, um, things like that. Um, it's important to get birds that are um, used to water as quickly as possible. Um, so directly in front of us is the flight cage complex. So we have two um, hundred foot flight cages um, and then four small leg. Um, sometimes their flight muscles get a little soft. Um, happens to me every winter. Um, so they go into our, the flight cages, they build up their strength, they build up their flight. Um, oh, there's a little downy woodpecker. Hello, friend. Sorry to scare you. Um, that was adorable. Uh, this is um, our corn crib. So you'll see straight ahead. Um, this was their corn um, it is in the listing of historical um, places, which is pretty cool. Um, but the flight cages are usually the last stop on their road to recovery. Um, 
so we have the availability to have the whole thing opened so it's a little over 200 feet um, for um, to build their flight muscles before release so we're climbing up onto the deck just to get kind of a different look you can see a really good angle of the fight cage complex and then so here's another view that's the annex please uh uh, join Michelle for a live tour of the annex. You won't want to miss it. The annex is amazing and so is Michelle. So this overlooks our campus. It's a really cool bird's eye view. So you can see we have all different caging from uh, enclosures for songbirds, owls, um, any species that we treat so that is all wild and native birds so so our campus is gorgeous um, and that ends my tour um, thank you again so much for joining me today um, I'm really just so honored to be able to share with you uh, how amazing I think Tri-State is, how amazing the mission is, how amazing the staff is, and to the volunteers, we really miss you. Um, stay safe and healthy. We love you. We'll be together soon. Um, so thank you so much for joining me today. Um, stick around for, um, we have a full day of fun things, uh, like crafts, demonstrations. Um, so once again, I say thank you. Um, thank you for all your amazing questions, um, and enjoy the rest of your beautiful day. Thank you.